I had a chance to mingle at intermission with, with many old friends and new friends, and thank you for your kind words. It's, um, I was only 5'6 before intermission, and now I'm about 5'8. <laughs> you see, kindness, like music, is a universal language. Kindness, like music, or music, like kindness, has a way without any verbal repartee, has a way of reaching inside of you, taking you down a country lane, or having you have your darkest fears realized, or, or unbridled joy, or sensuality, or any of those things we call emotions. Music, of all of the visual, of all the arts, Music has the greatest potential to do that. Dance certainly does the same thing, that you look at how a moving body can convey. Or you look at a piece of still art, a sculpture, or a, a, a canvas, and you look at it, and you look at it, and the details just make themselves known. Art is life. In the Beaverton Band, we do music for a lifetime. That's our, that's our brand. That's what we do. It's what you find on our website. It's what we all believe. We're going to continue sharing our art of music with you with illuminations. You read in your program about David Maslanka. Sadly, he passed away just a few years ago. He was a giant in school music. He could get more young men and women enthused about this art with the kind of music he wrote. First, he loved percussionists. Sorry, Hale. And um, he would always have pieces with lots and lots of percussion, as he does in this piece. Secondly, he was fascinated with sound. And he was also a believer in, in music pedagogy. You will hear in Illuminations lots of scalar passages. Beep, up, 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 beep, up, 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 beep, up, 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 really fast and really brilliant. And you'll hear lots of contrasting, almost fighting sounds to try and take the rhythm away from each other. Bomb, bomb, beep, bomb, beep, bomb. It's just an exciting piece. It is illuminating. So buckle up. Buckle up. Illuminations, David Maslanka.
So I'd like to take a few minutes and tell you about this next piece. Um, we were originally going to do this um, before, shortly after COVID started, so it was sometime in that March of 2020 timeframe. Um, but obviously it changed. I need to tell you a little bit about this piece, Mass. Simple song in your program, but it comes from a Leonard Bernstein uh, composition that, that uh, went up in 1971 as a dedication to the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. In the 1960s, there was plenty of stuff. Rock and roll was here to stay. Beatles, Rolling Stones, Moody Blues, The Beach Boys, The Love and Spoonful, Grateful Dead, Dave Clark Five, Janis Joplin. Blood, Sweat and Tears, and I probably left off 100, 100 rock and roll groups and folk groups. There was also the folk giants. Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, Joni Mitchell, Don McLean, Jim Croce, Tom Lehrer. People who had a message that wasn't always the message you wanted to hear. Society was fracturing. We were in an armed conflict that a lot of us didn't want to have happen, and some of us did. And the byproduct of that is there was terrible issues, terrible, terrible things. Kent State, the body counts, just terrible, terrible. I was in my early 20s. Political dissension, assassinations. When Mr. Kennedy was assassinated, Leonard Bernstein wrote his piece, Kaddish, as a dedication, as a memory of the life of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Mrs. Kennedy, Jacqueline Onassis then, asked him if he would write something for the dedication of the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. And Bernstein decided that he would do something like a Catholic mass, except instead of a straightforward thing, Mr. Bernstein said he wanted it to be more apropos to what was happening in society. So instead of just a standard mass, he, he did what's called a tridentine, a three-part mass that instead of everybody adoring in this Catholic rite, instead of it being recited verbatim, he wanted, he applied it to the very Jewish practice in the Talmud of debating with God. Not just praying to God, debating. So these two factions, that's what he wanted to do. And I have to tell you this, because when you hear this music, you go, oh, it's so simple, this dilemma. So this piece premiered in 1971. There were over 200 participants. There was a symphony orchestra in the pit. There was a rock and roll band on stage. There was a wind band on stage. There were jugglers. There were acrobats. There were people in costumes. It was all going on at the Kennedy Center. A concert organ, a rock organ. It was crazy. There was a street chorus. In this mass, it was performed by a celebrant, as many are, and things got tense by design. And it all went down, crashing on the stage, everybody disagreeing, yelling, and screaming. And then this song is heard. Sing God a simple song. Lauda laude. Make it up as you go along. Lauda laude. Sing like you like to sing. God loves all simple things, for God is the simplest of all. Blessed is the man who loves the Lord, lauda, lauda, laude, and walks in his name, lauda, lauda, laude, lauda, lauda, la di da, e, e, all of my days. So that was the text of Simple Song. It definitely has a rock and roll feel. It's simple, and the truth is simple.
appreciate your program, the descriptions about Shenandoah. You see that it's it's probably not the Shenandoah you know. It is the Shenandoah you know, but not in this way. This is a much more worldly, not just highs but lows, not just surety but doubt. Um, this, this arranger, Omar Thomas, is uh, primarily trained as a jazz musician. The complex chords really appeal to him. There's plenty of complex chords in this. The lovely melody, oh Shenandoah, do, 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 is, is masked inside the texture. It's over here or it's over there. It's rarely all together. So as a listener, it is successful if it draws you from this texture, this timbre, to that timbre as we play the music. There's a, um, uh, a technique used to simulate rain. If you hear the rain, you've done it. Good on you. Shenandoah, Omar Thomas.
Thornton Wilder wrote his novel. Broadway got onto his novel, wrote it into a play, a straight play. It was really good. Hollywood got a hold of it, wanted to make a film, and they did. They asked the dean of 20th century American composers, before Bernstein, of course, Aaron Copeland, what he would do as an opening for this movie, Grover's Corners. And I don't know, you could find it on any number of online sites. I was absolutely enthralled at the beginning of the film to have the camera pan up over the hill and look down on this little town in the valley, the railroad running through it in the station and zooms in closer. And it's 1900 and something, seven, eight. I could be a little wrong, but I think I'm right because the milkman still had a horse and cart. And the milk was in big cans that he poured into your bottles. Um, delightful movie, delightful play, delightful book. And we hope you like Grover's Corners where nobody locks their doors. Delightful place. It's, it's amazing to me what the music of Aaron Copeland can do. He just grabs you, like John Williams, like Leonard Bernstein, like George Gershwin. They just had the gift 
Whatever that gift is, they had it. It's great. We finish today with our thanks to you for coming out instead of mowing your lawn, as Maine said. You can come and mow my lawn if you like. Um, we're grateful that you're here. We're grateful that you're supporting us. We look forward to seeing you in March. We think on the 20th, I think the date is, um, in this very place with another wonderful concert called Dances for Wind Band. So get your cha-cha ready, get your tango ready, and get some other dances that you've never heard of ready. We finished today with the Susan March. You see in your program what, how it came to be from this, this first military organization in the United States, still going. I don't know that it's active military or reserve military. I, I don't really understand that, but that's fine. Odd Lang Syne written by Robbie Burns, lovely poem. It's traditional. It's well known in the English speaking world. It's traditionally, when do we sing it? New Year's Eve. And we say, out with the old, in with the new, so to speak. Except that's not really what it's about. People also sing this song at graduations, funerals, farewells at other occasions. Robbie Burns in this poem upholds the value of friendship and of brotherhood. It's not about forgetting the past and welcoming the new. That's what we have made it, and that's okay. But what it's really about is valuing the old and the memories that are associated with that and them. We value you. We play this song for you. Um, I would not have known about this without the cooperation of the president's own Marine Band librarian in Washington, D.C., one of five full-time librarians for that great band. Um, we talk on the phone, we express, we exchange emails. It's available to anybody, and I just feel so fortunate that they have given me lots of gifts to give to this band for us to play for you. Here is one. Thank you. <laughs> 